What is going on, everybody? John Marone here. We're going to get this thing started in about 60 seconds. Wait for some of those stragglers to come on in here. So give us another 60 seconds. In the meantime, let me know what questions, what obstacles, what objections you guys are coming across so we can go ahead and attack it right away and take advantage of this call. So let's give it about another 30 to 60 seconds. All right, what is going on, everybody? Once again, my name is John Marone. Uh, you guys probably hear me on here every few weeks. Uh, I know that sometimes I'm not on here. We have some people like Kayla come in and crush it. But today, you guys are going to be stuck with me. So happy, happy day after or week after Thanksgiving, uh, Cyber Monday. So I'm sure you guys are getting all your Amazon shopping in. Um, what I want to do, guys, I want to jump into role playing if you guys want to role play or any major objections that you guys just are having trouble overcoming i want to answer them for you so go ahead and put them in the chat let's see all right so go ahead and put them in the chat if you have any questions or objections i want to make sure that we take care of everything that's on your guys mind look we're going into 2019 right 2019 is right around the corner but you should already be prepping for what you want so if you have not set your goals yet for 2019, we're also going to talk about some best practices because I think you guys need to realize how important preparation is, right? How important the manifestation is in order to figure out what you want, why you want it, and then how to go get it. So we're going to talk about some best practices for goal setting. But first thing I want to do is see if anybody has any objections that they're having trouble overcoming. So go ahead and put them in there and let's get it started all right so we got one we got a few cool cool perfect so when i call from sync and i call a lot of them say they never registered or even verified telephone number and email sylvia thank you so much for that guys this is a big aha all right you guys got your pen and paper ready right so this is a big aha for you guys so she had said when i called they said they never registered for anything now i'm not sitting there in your office but i'm gonna give it a really good guess and i'm going to say that you're probably using that word registered right so they're using that word registered so if you are calling and you're saying the word registered or signed up we need to eliminate it we all know how big brother creeps people out nowadays um and, and it's just an excuse right i want to ask questions i either a know the answers to or, or b at least have an opportunity to come back from that is a landmine that you see and that you're stepping on. So eliminate the word registered or signed up. Now, if you do the, the normal opening line that we taught you guys, and they come back and say, I didn't register for anything. You just come back and say, okay, not a big deal. It looks like we have your information here and you're looking at homes in this market. So are you looking to possibly make a move in the next three to six months or are you just browsing? I'm going right back to the opening line. I'm going to almost ignore, I'm going to acknowledge it, then I'll ignore it and go right back into the opening line. So Sylvia and anybody out there, if they are saying, I didn't register for anything and I didn't sign up, there's a very good chance, very good chance that you're, utilize, you're using that word and are utilizing it against you. All right, hopefully that helped a little bit. We got another one here. What do you say when someone asks you to take them off your list? Is there any way you can still nurture those leads? So. The, the, 
it's, it's hard to say because I don't know how the conversation went prior, right? Is it right away? Um, is it, you know, throughout the conversation? More than likely, I'm sure it's kind of right away. So I'd first ask, what is your opening line? Thank you. She said right away. What does your opening line sound like? Is it the opening line that we gave you guys? Um, and, and if it is, are you saying it with confidence? If not, you need to start utilizing that. Now, if they still come back and say, take me off your list, you just say, not a problem. I'm just wondering, is there anything that we could have done better to help you with your home search? Just get into a customer service role at that point and then try to dig back into what their why is because then they're going to go ahead, their wall's going to drop, and they're going to start opening up. So you go right back into it and say, oh, I totally get it, but let me ask you, is there something we could have done better in order to provide you with the list that you want to have homes and to get you into the home of your dreams? And just see what they say. I will tell you something. There's going to be some people that say, stop calling. There's going to be some people that say, take me off your list, no matter what you do. And that's when you pull out the famous word, which is next. Right? You got to start looking at a no through a different lens. And, and you have to use that word next with absolute, absolute excitement. That Thank you so much for letting me get off the phone with you immediately by you being a jerk. So now I can get into more yeses or more no's that's going to moment, you know, build momentum into a yes. So with that being said, sometimes you just have to stand up and say next and move on to the next person. But don't do it without at least trying. You know, don't utilize the word next to, to say next to everybody. Only use it when it's very appropriate, where people are being a jerk or whatever the case may be. But I'd first find out how are you starting to call? And then when they give you that, are you backing up and saying, basically customer service role, totally understand, we definitely can. Let me ask you, where did we drop the ball? Hopefully that helped for you. If it did, let me know, let me know. But I would say definitely go back to the opening line um, and then use that word next when appropriate. People who have a realtor, Susan said. Yeah, that's, that's another one. Are you asking? Are you asking, do you have a realtor? Now, if you're asking that, that's another thing. I want to eliminate. I want to eliminate, are you, do you have a realtor? Why? Because it gives them an excuse to say, yes, they have one, when they really don't. Right, when they really don't. Remember guys, buyers are liars, right? But, but they're only liars because they're scared. The biggest fear in a human is rejection. So they're lying to you because they're scared. How many times did you lie to your parents because you were scared of something? So you have to understand that they're scared, therefore they will lie to you. You have to push past that lie in order to bring their wall down and let them open up. So if you're asking the you have a realtor, just eliminate it. Now, if they just come out and say it, say, perfect, I completely understand. Um, you know, is there a reason why you're on our site versus theirs? Find out, get clarity, get, get clarity. And then say, okay, you know, if I were to find something that's an off-market property that matches exactly what you're looking for, would you want me to send it to you? They say, yeah, sure. Okay, well, perfect. So tell me what's prompting you to move. I'm coming right back, right back to that why, right? So right back to, to, to that question. So if they say, yeah, send it to me if you have something. Perfect. So tell me what's prompting you to move. And I go right back into my script. Hopefully that helped. If that answered your question, let me know. Susan said their realtor sent them to our site. <laughs> well, you know what? That, that's a possibility. You know, but it, it's going to be your job. Because remember this stat. I always want you to remember this stat. I want it to be in your, in your head all day, every day when you're calling. 86% like of home buyers do not think you understand their problem. Let me repeat that. 86 of home a percent of home buyers do not think you understand the problem. So with that being said, what do you think you need to do? You need to ask them what their why is. You need to ask them what their why is because their why is their problem. Their problem isn't that they want three bedroom, you know, or, or two bath or bigger. There's something deeper inside of that. So you got to find it. The only way to do that is to ask enough questions and ask the right questions. Remember, your income is proportionate to the questions you ask your clients, guys. Your income is proportionate to the questions you ask your clients. You guys are going to hear me say that over and over again. Um, you guys probably, if you've seen me over conversion day, you definitely heard me say it. Your income is proportionate to the questions you ask your clients. Good questions and bad questions, right? All right. So let's see here. So 
if we don't tell them to op tell them the opening line that they register on a website, what do we do? So the opening line goes like this, Sylvia. So you give them a call. You don't say their name. You say your name, but you don't say their name. You say, hey, and you don't say, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, this is John with the home search site. Just saw you're looking, you can say looking, over in the Dallas market. Just curious, like going to make a move in the next 36 months or are you just browsing? Or you go back and you say, hey, this is John. I know you're looking over at some homes. I'm just curious, you're looking to make a move in the next 36 months or are you just browsing? You don't even need to say, right? You don't even need to say that they were looking at a specific area because they can come back and say, oh, Dallas, that's not the area I'm looking in even though I would turn that into perfect. What area are you looking into? But you say, hey, I know that you were looking at some property, at some homes. Just curious, you're looking to make a move in the next three to six months or were you just browsing? And then we have another question. What open line do you recommend for sellers? So this is a buyer conversion call, but quick tidbit on that, I would just say the home value site. Hey, so all that uh, you're looking at the home value site, because more than likely, that's how you got them. It all depends on where you got that seller lead from. That's, it's a, that's a different call and a different opening, but utilize a home value site because that's probably where a lot of your uh, leads are coming from on a seller side. So our opening line, hello, this is blank with the home search site. Oh, where'd it go? This is blank with the home search site you registered on. I see you're looking in. So yeah, don't even say registered on. So Sylvia, take out registered. Hey, this is John with the home search site. I know you're looking at some homes. Just curious, you look at making a move in the next three to six months, or were you just browsing? So this is John with the home search site. I saw you're looking at homes, you could say, but that would also freak him out, right? So hey, this is John with the home search site. I know you're looking at some homes. Just curious, look at making a move in the next three to six months, or just browsing. You got to utilize your tonality. You got to utilize your confidence and energy. I cannot stress this enough, guys. Energy is contagious. Energy creates engagement. So you need to have energy when you get on the calls. Last time I did a, uh, I don't know when it was, but when I did the last call with you guys on the conversion call, I went over specifics on how to capture and gain energy before your calls and throughout your calls because it's the person with high energy and enthusiasm on call 101 that is going to win, not just call one. What are you going to do to keep your energy going from call one to 101? Because in between that time, you're going to get punched in the face a lot. So what's going to keep you going? What's going to keep you going? Challenge you to figure that out in 2019. Uh, a few leads claim that this is not the phone number of the person I'm looking for. It, it may, it may not be. Uh, you know, I, I would just come back, Susan, and say, interesting. So you looking to make a move next three, six months or are you just browsing? No, this, well, this you know, definitely you know, got the wrong number. Okay, do you want me to take the email off the list too? Just ask them. Hey, you don't really need to take it off. Just ask them. You may be calling somebody at the wrong time, right? We don't know that. We don't know. They may say no today, but yes tomorrow. How many times have you called somebody like, I'm not looking to buy a house. You kept them in your system, or maybe they said it's the wrong number. You kept them in your system. Then you gave them a call three months later, and they said, actually, I just bought a home. If that's ever happened to you, put a one in a chat. Have you ever called somebody, they said they weren't looking to buy, or maybe it wasn't even their number and then you get touch them a few months later and they already bought yeah blow blow up the chat box because everybody on here should be putting one <laughs> if you're calling up leads awesome all right let's look at another one here boom, 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 boom. what do you say if they say just browsing oh that's that, that's perfect right so guys the scripts are written so intentionally like I'm saying just browsing because that's what they're going to say. That's what they always say, right? Like, so I'm giving it to them. I want them to say just browsing. Or I mean, I really want them to say, no, I'm actually looking to make a move. But if they say just browsing, perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. Let me ask you, what's prompting you to browse? Perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. Why are you browsing? So I'm saying browsing intentionally because I know they're going to say that anyway. You know your partner's lines. Guys, you've been doing this for way too long not to know what your objections are going to be or, or you know, what they're going to say on the other end. And you know what they're going to be. So the script that we created, we know our partner's lines, so we're going to give them that line so they can use it, but we're going to Jedi them and we're, 
<laughs> we know that they're gonna say that, so we have something to come back with. <laughs> Someone put one, 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 one. <laughs> awesome. They, or they say they're no longer interested. You know, so if they say they're no longer interested, say, okay, I'm just curious, you know, what has changed since you registered with the site? Dig in, get clarity. Get clarity. Eric says, where can I find the scripts? Come to conversion day. That's where you can find the scripts. <laughs> conversion day. Um, actually, it's syncommunity.com. Go to syncommunity.com. Once you're done with this call, and you guys can find, we, listen to this. So we have four conversion days coming up next year that are going to be um, at our headquarters. So two in Atlanta, two in Phoenix. Then we're coming on the road. We're going to Southern California, Northern California, January 10th week. I'll have all those specifics uh, by end of this week. Then we're coming to um, Chicago in August. We're going to Dallas in November. So, and I would, I would come multiple times. I would come multiple times to a conversion day. Last conversion day, we had 130 people there. The place holds 140. Now, when we go locally, it's probably only going to fit like 40 to 60. So very limited, very, very, very limited. How do you respond to, well, I have your information, so I call you when I am ready. Great question. Great question. So it, it just goes back to the opening line, guys. Look, 70% of your objections, if not more, are coming from your opening lines. Realize that. 70% of your objections are coming from the opening lines. Now, knowing that, you need to master the opening line. You know, you, you have to get truly, truly confident in every word that you say um, and, and stick to the plan, right? Stick to the script that you know uh, that, that we've created for you guys. But you have to get confidence with it. But it comes from your opening lines. So it says, well, I'll have your information. I'll call you when I'm ready. When is that coming in the conversation? Right, like a lot of times that comes with after you sometimes get the bedrooms and the bath. What you need to do, if you guys never heard this before, if you guys, if this is your first time on a call, then then you need to write this down. If it's your second, third, five thousand time, <laughs> fifth thousand time, I don't care what it is. If you've been on this call before, I still want you to write this down. You go three Y's deep for every what. Three Y's for every what. So he says after I speak with them, they ask if. They see anything that they would that they'll call. Hold on. If they see anything they like, they'll call. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're basically saying they'll they'll call you. So that goes right back to the opening line, man. Like it goes back to you not showing your value. So you have that opening line. You break down their why. They won't say that. They won't. And even if they do, you bring out the analogy. The analogy I'd love to use. All right. This is this is first off you. You got to use this analogy, but you want to make sure you use it when they ask you certain things. And I'm all about using analogies. So when they ask something like that of, hey, can you just send me the information? Hey, can I just call you, uh, you know, when I see something I like? Absolutely you can, John. But let me ask you this. See how I started that? Let me ask you this. Write that down. And you should be saying that, you know, let me ask you this should be a filler um, in, in a lot of places in, throughout your script. So let me ask you this. Do you believe this is the biggest transaction of your life? Absolutely. I definitely think it is. Yeah, I would definitely agree. So let's say, God forbid, you know, you're up for murder. First of all, were you, were you ever up for murder before? No, ha, ha, ha. They get a good laugh at it. Okay, good. So let's say you're up for murder. Would you want to meet your lawyer day of trial, day of sentencing, or would you want to meet him prior? Well, John, I, you know, I want to meet him prior. Yeah, I definitely hope so, but why? I mean, why would you want to meet him prior? I want to figure out, like, how is this going to help me not go to jail? I want to figure out a strategy. Well, with this being the biggest transaction of your life, I want to make sure that you have clarity that our strategy is going to fit your needs and your lifestyle. And, like, I'm not going to ask you to buy a home when you come here. All I'm going to ask you to do is to make sure it's a good fit so you're not wasting your time a, looking at properties that don't make sense for you, your lifestyle, and the lifestyle that you want. And B, that you're working with the right person that's going to have your best interest at hand. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Perfect. So 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock on Tuesday, what works better for you? So I'm using the analogy, but I'm asking questions to lead it up. You must ask these questions to lead up to it. Do you feel this is the biggest transaction of your life? Absolutely. If you're up, ever up for murder, would you want to meet your lawyer? That day or prior? I want to meet him prior. Don't stop there. Okay, why is that important to you? 
And then they come and so you want to continually ask those questions to break the analogy down so they are telling you. The person doing the selling, sorry, the person doing the telling is the person doing the selling. The person doing the telling is the person doing the selling. So you need to have them tell you as much as possible. They need to be coming to these conclusions themselves, even if you Jedi mind trick them to basically say what you want them to say, because that's how the script is, is really written out. Hopefully that helped. What else? What other questions do you guys have? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. I didn't start off saying that. Hopefully everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving. You guys created some memories. Uh, you had some time with some loved ones. And I know the end of the year is coming up here, so I appreciate you guys all on the call and being committed. You know, we, we, we have to finish strong. I want you guys to grab some momentum going into the new year, and I'm going to talk about some, some best practices for goal setting here in a minute. Uh, but I want to see any other questions you guys have. Fire away. Let's go. Pick my brain. Stump me. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's see. Any questions? Any questions? All right. While you guys are figuring that out, let's talk. If you, and let me let me ask you this. I know this is a conversion call. I'm just just curious. Do you want to hear some best practices for goal setting, like in general? It's just it'd be for business, for for health, for relationship. If so, put yes in there. So I give you guys some nuggets. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. All right. Um, I did see a question come in. I'm not looking uh, to buy for a year or two. Let's kind of touch on that for a second. Susan said, not looking to make a year, make a buy. Uh, yeah, not looking to buy for a year or two. So what I would do is I would ask, first off, Susan, did you get their why? If you know their why, they're not, A, want to, get, want to go through that again because it's strenuous on them as much as it is in you for, to ask that many times why, why, why. B, it's your job to hold them accountable to their goals. But now if they still want to wait, I'd pull out, the question of, all right, absolutely. But let me ask you this, Susan. Do you think home prices are going to go up or down in 12 months? Probably up. Maybe down. I don't really care what they say. Hopefully they say up. Let me say, if they say down, say, I mean, it could. But in the last 12 months and every 12 months prior, we've seen a 10% growth or whatever it is in your market. Let me ask you this, Susan. Do you feel that... Uh, the interest rates are going to go up or down. Oh, they're definitely going to go up. Absolutely. So I have to ask you, would you be okay getting the same size house, exactly what you want and paying, you know, additional two to $300, if not more a month, or would you be okay with getting into a smaller house for what you can currently pay? Oh, I, I, you know, I'd rather not do either of those. Okay. So if we were to find you something that was perfect um, and then you bring out their motivation, pain or pleasure, would you consider moving sooner? Let me repeat that to you guys so you guys have this. Not looking to make a, a, a move for the next year or two. I asked them, prices up or down next 12 months? Up, down, whatever it might be, whatever they say. When, even if they say down, well, it could go down, but we've actually seen a 10% increase in the last 12 months. Interest rates, up or down? Up, absolutely. So let me ask you this. Would you be okay with paying more for the same type of house you want now? Or would you be okay with paying the same amount for a smaller house? I wouldn't be okay with either of those. Absolutely, neither would I. So if I were to find you that four bedroom, three bath house that got you closer to your son's school so that he can go ahead or you can go ahead and drive him to school every single day, would you consider moving sooner? Hopefully that helped you a little bit, Susan. Uh, just looking for an estimate on my home value. Also, that's going to be a different call. That's the sell side. So what I would say just on that note, absolutely. We could definitely get you that. Now these, um, you know, they're, they're generated off of a computer. So they don't take in effect the market trends, the updates, anything like that. So the best thing to do is I have a neighborhood expert over in Savannah. They'll come out, they'll do an evaluation for you, make sure that, you know, they could tell you what your home is worth. And honestly, when you should be selling it, whether it's two months, 12 months, uh, whatever's going to be best for, you know, the, the value of your home. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. But that's once again, uh, it's going to be a stellar call. Uh, Michelle says, can you give opening lines again? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it real quick, but it's basic. So it's, hey, this is John with the home search site. I know you're looking over at some homes. I'm just curious, looking to make a move in the next three to six months, or are you just browsing? Hey, this is John with the home search site. I know you're looking over at some property, at some homes. I know you are, right? Rather than I saw you browsing, uh, rather than I saw you registered, I know you're looking at some homes. 
Just curious, looking to make a move in the next three to six months, or are you just browsing? Oh, I'm just browsing. Perfect. That's exactly what the site is for. Just curious, what's prompting you to browse? Uh, let's see. I had a lot of people want to do the, the goal setting, but let's see. Do, 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 do. I had a scheduled an appointment, but they canceled through text because she had said her husband still wants to think about it. Should I call her and ask her what changed? Absolutely. But you got to look back and say, what did I do that I could have done differently? That's my first question to you. What did you do wrong? I'm going to give you some, some pointers here. Guys, if you have people that cancel on you, let me give you some, some tips that may help you guys. Number one is always send a thank you note because write this down. When you go the extra mile, it's never crowded. When you go the extra mile, it's never crowded. So send them a handwritten card before you go there, right? Number two, how did you set the appointment? Meaning, how do they like to communicate? Did you set up a Google Calendar invite for them? Maybe that's the way they like to go ahead and schedule their events. Did you ask them, do you like a text message, phone call, or email? Because the best way to communicate is whatever way they like to communicate. Right? Let's treat people the way they want to be treated versus the way we want to be treated. This way, you can increase your results. Um, so sending the letter, also doing the, the communication piece. And then I don't know what happened with her husband. He said he still wants to think about it. Was he on the phone? Was he not on the phone? Um, I, I would, you know, I would still dive deep into that. I mean, I would still send him a handwritten card. Handwritten card. And, oh, how do I get their, their, uh, their address? You just ask them. Hey, by the way, what's your current address? I just want to send you over, uh, you know, some things that we, we use to help you, you know, buy the home of your dreams. I want to send you a thank you card. I want to send you our, our smart home buying strategy. Whatever it might be. And send it to them. Send it to them. John, do you have a sell side role playing call? No, we do not. Not that I know of, but there's a chance, you know, we may be working on something uh, just because I know our listing side, we're um, going obviously a little bit in, more in on this year since it's a little bit newer. Um, so, but as of right now, no, we do not. But great question. All right. Any other questions before we get into some goal setting? I have to really they call it goal declaring, you know, and, and you guys all know, like if we, if we Google goal setting, how many things are you going to find online? Thousands, thousands of things. And I've had the opportunity to, you know, interview some amazing, amazing people. Um, I have had the opportunity to, to really just sit down and digest their content or, or um, really follow them around and, and see what they're doing. And these people are way smarter than I am. I mean, and that's the room you should be in, by the way, guys, if you're the smartest person in the room, you got to get out of that room. And I've really learned a lot from so many different people from so many different walks of life and really taking what they use for goal setting and, and you know, mashing it up and, and putting it into play and seeing what works, what doesn't work. So some things I'm going to give you guys, uh, you may have heard of some things uh, may be different for you. But what I want to do is I want to give you guys some some gold here for for 2019. I want everybody to win. You know, my, my goal is to have, you know, good people get better, better people become great and great people become excellent. Um, and I want to do that for good hearted people. So if that's you, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to help you out a little bit here because all of the leads in the world will never matter. Uh, they, they, they just won't unless you have a, a clear strategy of, of, you know, what you're going to do, uh, but what you want, what does success look like? What does success look like for you is what you have to determine and you have to integrate your life rather than balance your life. You know, real estate, we get it. I mean, you know, it's, it's the roller coaster ride. It's the ups and the downs. It's the waiting for this check to clear in order to pay for this. And let's stop that, right? Like, when is, when is enough enough? You know, and, and, and what are you going to do differently? Einstein always says, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This is the definition of insanity. But yeah, when I talk to real estate agents and brokers and, and many other people in different industries, they're doing the same thing over and over again and complaining that they're not getting different results. So the first thing is, is figuring out what the success look like. Now we're made up of these six equities, guys. So make sure you have your pen and paper. These six equities are our health and that's mental and physical. Our personal life, that's personal development, that's leisure, things of that nature. It's, it's more of leisure because health wise, the mental is going to be, um, you know, more or the personal development. So you have health, you have personal, you have relationships. That's with your friends and your family. 
I, I do these in separate ones. I do friends and family relationships, your business, and that's more structure, right? It's not money, it's structure. So it's having three agents under me. It's having a team of 10. It's, uh, you know, having an office that's, you know, looks like this, whatever the structure looks like for your business that you want. Then you have your finances and that's from the money coming in to money going out, your savings, 401k, investments, so on and so forth. Then last but not least, spiritual. Whatever that means for you, spiritual. Those are our six equities. Now that we have that, we need to get an understanding of what does success look like in those areas. Now, you know, I have a lot of people that they'll, they'll do the wheel of life and everything, but since we don't have that now, um, I would like for you to take a step back and just rate yourself one to 10, 10 being the best, one being not so good, where you're currently at. You know, where are you currently at? First number, where are you at? Because if you understand where you're at, if you understand where the holes in the ship are, it's a little bit easier to plug them. Uh, sometimes we get out to sea and we totally forgot that there's a hole here, hole here, hole here. So no matter how far we're out, we're going to start to sink. So evaluate where you are in those six equities. And then the lowest three, I want you to write down what is it that I need to do? What are three things I need to do in order to make that an eight, a nine, or a 10? Right? What is it I need to do? So now you guys got that. Then you're going to write down your legacy. So you got your six equities. You got where you're at now. And then what, what does your legacy look like? I'm going to tell you guys something super important. When you go to a graveyard and you see all these tombstones, what's the most important part of the tombstone? I would like for anybody to guess. Anybody know what it is? You can put it in the chat. Anybody know what the most important part of the tombstone is? You know, whenever we go there and we look, we're like, oh, my God, you know, he was, he was, you know, born in, you know, 1943 and he lived until, you know, whatever, 2010 or, hey, he only lived for this long. People are looking at the day they're born. Maybe they're looking at the, the, you know, the year they died. Some people are looking at the quote on there. The most important part of a gravestone and, or, or, or a tombstone is going to be the dash, right? The dash. So I need you to figure out what is that dash going to mean? It's the legacy. Exactly, Gary. That dash is your legacy. Like, let's get clear on that first. Like, what is my dash mean? When, when my grandkids, 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 you know, come here and they see this and they look at the dash, what are they going to think of? You know, whether the, the tombstone reads, you know, you lived until you were 75 or until you were 30, what is the dash going to mean? So let's get clear on that. And then break down, what do you want your 10-year goal to look like in each equity, then your five-year, and then three and one. Now, the difference between three and one um, between those and the rest of them, that's where you get granular. That's where you get stupid specific. I'm talking about if you want a boat, you need to tell me what day, what year, what color, what size. Get super, super granular with that. That's years one and three for each equity. So maybe you want to go ahead and, and uh, you know, for, for finances, you want to make six figures. Well, that's not a goal. Like what, uh, how much? $150,000. By what day? Is it, is it by December 25th, 2019? Is it, you know, is it by November 25th, 2019? What is it? What is the day? So you get stupid specific with the details and the dates for years one and three. One and three. The rest, you know, you're still going to put them in every equity, but you don't need to get as detailed. Now, the last thing is, is what a little bonus tip for you guys. Uh, I mean, and it's something you could do before. Anybody write a, a bucket list? All right, anybody ever do a bucket list here? I'm not a fan of bucket list. Right? Why, why am I not a fan of bucket list? Because I used to do it. I mean, I actually just saw a Facebook post of mine uh, that, that popped up and I was talking about bucket list. But bucket list, like, I just jumped out of an airplane not too long ago, a few months ago. And when I jumped out of it, even though I felt like I was dying, I didn't do it. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing this because I want to do it before I die. Like I'm doing these things because it just kind of proves to me, it shows to me that through this experience, I am living, right? So I don't want to create a bucket list so that I could do something before I die. I want to create a living life list to show that when I'm doing it, I am living. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, please put a one in there so I know you're with me, guys. <laughs> because I know this is all topic, but you guys said you wanted to hear it. So the bucket list, I would trash that and create a living life list. 
right? Living like, yes, I'm going skydiving on New Year's Eve. That's awesome. <laughs> and by the way, if you're going skydiving and you've never done it before, pay for the video. Pay for the video. Do it, do it, do it, do it, at least for your first time. So I want to create a living life list. And, and then when I take that living life list, then I put it into my, usually my personal goal. Uh, that's where most of them end up. Now, it could be somewhere else, but most of them end up in a personal goal. And now I can put it towards like what year I want it, right? So I'm going to go to Bora Bora. And maybe it's not going to be in three years, but I want it in, you know, 10 years. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm a 10 year. You know, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the goals in there associated with whatever equity it is in the time frame I want to do it in. So living life list over bucket list. Well, that's a little tip for you guys. Got one more tip for you. <laughs> one more. And, and that is how we think of goals is not the right way to think of it. So we're looking at a goal. Let's just say it's $150,000 you want to make. Okay, random, $150,000. That necessarily isn't the goal. I mean, let me tell you why. We're driven off emotions as humans, right? Emotions create actions or lack of action, right? Emotion, you know, cre creates us to do things or, or not do things. So if we're driven off of emotion and you say, I want to make $150,000, but you know you need to call 100 people a day in order to hit that number. And you're calling maybe 60 people a day. What's going to be the driving factor for you to make 100 a day? Is it that you, you said you wanted to make $150,000, John? Or is it you said $150,000 will allow you to pay for that wedding that you want to have, that dream wedding, or that house that you want, or your kids' schooling. You said $150,000 would allow you to feel that way. Therefore, it would make you feel the emotions of proud, successful, um, you know, excited, joyful, happy. Like, that is the goal. The goal is to have those emotions. So your top five yearly goals, I want you to put down what – emotions doesn't make you feel like what's the why behind it why do you want to make 150,000 and what emotions does it bring you when you hit that this way when you do hit that or, or when you're not hitting your your numbers instead of saying hey you know you want to make 150,000 dollars this year I thought you want to do that why are you not calling 100 people a day you get to say to your 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 agents or to yourself John you said you need to make 100 calls and hit 150,000 dollars because you need to make you know, you need to go ahead and pay for your daughter's school and it's going to make you feel X, Y, and Z. Is that no longer important to you? Because if it's not, you need to change your goal. No, it's important. Then let's do it. Your emotion will drive you more towards your goal than the actual goal. Does that make sense, guys? Your emotion will. But if you don't understand what emotion that is and the why behind it, you're not going to be able to grasp it. So for your top five yearly goals, write down your why and emotions that it brings you behind it. Is this speaking to 100 people per day or place? I'm just saying random stuff. All right, that's that goal, 150,000. You got to call 100 people. That was legit, just a random number. Uh, you know, that's it's totally up to your tracking, which we'll talk about here in a second. But that's totally up to your tracking. I don't know uh, where your conversion rate is. So you're saying 60 calls a day, even if it's a voice mode? No, no. See, Sylvia, I was just using a very generic goal. <laughs> so I was saying a very generic goal, just showing you guys that your goal of 150,000, your goal of 200,000, whatever it might be, the why and the emotion behind it needs to be super clear because there's going to be days you don't want to do things and that emotion is going to make you say, yes, I'm going to do it. Because guys, the only difference between you and the number one person in your market is two things. One is that they role play. Okay. You want to increase your pay, increase your role play. That's number one. You need to increase your role play. That's a must. And number two is they do the things they don't want to do when they know they need to do it. That's the difference. Like it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Do things you don't want to do when you know you need to do it and role play. And those goals that you have, especially in the finance, uh, financial side of it, you'll hit it. You will hit it. And making sure that you're taking some time for personal development every single day. 30 minutes for you so you can give eight hours to everybody else. Remember, you can't fill anybody else's cup up if yours is empty, right? So those are my goal-setting best practices. Was that good? Yes or no? Tell me the truth. <laughs> Let me know if you guys are getting some value out of this call. Yes, 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 perfect. 
like I said, you know, it's 2019. I just, I just think that um, you guys should be prepping. You guys should be ready to win. You, you know, it's, it's seriously, whatever you want, you can have, but you got to figure out what you want. Like it's stupid, stupid specific. And then wake up every day. Like it's the biggest game of your life, ready to go crush it. If you're not waking up every day excited that this is the biggest day of your life, then I don't know what you're doing. You're not promised tomorrow. What are you doing today? Are you filling it up with excuses? Or are you filling it up with action? Right? Are you filling it up with value to others? Or are you not? Like, what are you doing to take advantage of the biggest game of your life, which is today? What are you doing to take advantage of the opportunities that's in front of you? So hopefully that helps you guys. We've got about 20 minutes here. So let me know what questions do you guys have ready to rumble? Yeah, killing it. My energy reminds me of Gary V. Gary, Gary V is a good guy. He's, uh, he's definitely got a lot, a lot of energy. He's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a spunk for sure. Yeah, Gary. And he's also from uh, – well, he lived in Jersey, so I'm from Jersey. He's awesome. He's good, good people, that's for sure. And he tells it like it is. One thing you'll find out with me, guys, is that, A, I'm not going to tell you something I don't know. I'll find the answer for you. Um, and, and, B, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear now, what you want to hear. And I appreciate every single one of you who are being vulnerable uh, because sometimes when we get on these role play calls and, you know, somebody, you know, botches up the call and, and butchers it, I have to be soup, you know, tell them what they need to hear. And, and you guys got to be vulnerable in getting that feedback so you can get better. So you guys are jumping on here shows the first step to success, which is personal development. So I appreciate you all jumping on here. It, it's, it shows uh, more than you know. What questions do you guys have? Let's go. We got about 17 minutes here. So what questions do you have, you know, whether it's through conversion or whatever it might be, let me know. I'm here for you guys. Let's see. Let's see. And remember, if you guys haven't set your goals yet, you need to be doing it. Oh, another thing, real quick, goal setting. Get the pen back out. Two more things. Do not, do not think about the how. Ah, that's, that's a trap. It is a trap, guys. Don't think about the how. You know, when you think about the how, you end up putting yourself in a box. You end up limiting uh, yourself to what you truly want. And then you also end up kind of scaring yourself. So do not worry about the how. It's all about the what and the why behind it, okay? Please do not worry about the how. how. Number two is get into an environment that you're uncomfortable in. Get into an environment that, not uncomfortable, that, that you're not used to being in, should I say. So if you're, I don't want you doing your goals at your office or at your home, even if it's quiet or, or you know, nobody's in there, it doesn't matter. You need to go somewhere to do your goals that is a piece of mind for you. The beach, the woods, the... Uh, you know, a mountain somewhere. I don't know. Find somewhere that you could sit there for several hours and just really reflect on what it is that you want. Because if you try to do it somewhere that you're normally at, you're going to limit yourself. You're going to get distracted. Your mind's going to go ahead and start fighting with you that you want this, you want that. Um, and then you're going to get distracted by, you know, the, the normal feeling you get while you sit in that seat. So two things, don't worry about the how and find a place that you can kind of sit down in peace and really think about it. All right, so let's see. What's the number one thing to remember at all times in this industry? There's so many things to remember. Um, I say in this industry, the number one thing to remember um, is, is – it's, it's so hard. I'm going to give you a few pointers here. It's really hard for me to say one thing because uh, I don't know where you're at, right? So as far as, as where you're at in your role, I would say, A, you need to master your craft. That's the number one thing. Like master your craft. Master your craft. And, and, and you do that by role-playing daily. So that's number one. Number two is don't ever compare your beginning with somebody's middle. Don't ever compare yourself to other people around you, the good or the bad, right? Like you may be doing better than all your friends. That doesn't mean you're doing great. Stop comparing yourself to them. Stop comparing yourself to the people that are doing better than you, right? You got to be better than one person, and that's you yesterday. That's not any industry, really. That's number two. And number three is you have value. You need to articulate that value and that authority um, and, and just pick up the phone and make your dials or build teams to make your dials for you and give them the best training in the industry. 
and be so damn good that the world can't ignore you. I know it's a bunch, but those are, those are my few. <laughs> Hopefully that helped for you. How and what helped you pull yourself up from your lowest lows? Gary, man, that's, there's, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, I still have low lows, right? I, I think, you know, we all do. But really it just, you know, coming from, some of you guys know my story, you know, the, the addiction and then you know, almost dying in Hurricane Sandy. I think what, it, what I realized is that it can happen like that, man. Like that, it can be gone. We've seen it with some of our friends and family, right? How many people have lost their life? And you're like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. But yet you still don't take advantage of your day. You know, I interviewed Eric Thomas and, and uh, he, I, you know, I asked, what, what, you know, how people get motivated. Well, you know, what are you going to tell them? And he simple, said, simple. And, and this, this could help. Put your fingers on your neck and put your fingers on your wrist. What do you feel? A pulse. Like, if that doesn't motivate you, then I don't know what will. And, and you know what I mean? Like, you, you got a pulse, go. You got eyes on you. You got people looking at you, whether it's just you looking back at yourself or somebody else. Like, you get one shot at life, dude. Like, and that's it. Why would I waste it? I wasted it for 20 plus years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm, I'm done with the wasting it. Not bad days, yeah. Of course. They just kick that back in. Never let one day turn into two. <laughs> Never let one day turn into two. That's it. And just have extreme self-awareness. What do you mean don't worry about the how? You mean how am I going to succeed in this business? Sylvia, basically, I mean, don't worry about the how, right? So like if, if we talked about 150,000. Don't think, okay, I got to make 150,000. Now I got to figure out how many calls. Now I got to figure out, you know, how many hours. Just figure out what that goal is. You figure out the how after. Like once you start, start thinking about the how, you start getting scared and start lowering your um, expectations, start lowering your goals. So just don't think about how you're going to do it. Just think about what you want and why you want it. Well, I was taking notes. I missed the second thing you said about increasing your income. To increase your income, role play, and then to increase oh, – no, I just repeated it. So basically I said uh, to increase your pay, increase your role play. Increase your pay, increase your role play. Do you have any suggestions on who and how I could role play? Okay, yeah. So Sylvia, go to our Facebook group. If you're looking for a role play partner, put it on there. If you're not a part of a Facebook group, Jane Sink, J-A-N-E Sink, she'll be able to, or just ask your success partner, ask somebody at Sink, hey, hook me up with that Facebook group. There's tons of people out there. And also, I'd love for you to come to one of the events. Once again, it's SinkCommunity.com. Check out all the events we have coming up in 2019. I have some buyers who are active on the site, logging in multiple times a day, but I can't get them to pick up the phone. Is this the next scenario? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look, the average time people start looking to actually buy is 19 months. And if you're once again in that Facebook group, you'll see people like, man, 450 days, this guy was in the system. He finally bought. The only time you do a next scenario is when they're a complete jerk to you. And that's really it. Or like when you just don't want to work with that kind of person, you know, like that's it. But the next scenario is really looking at, you know, a, a no through a different lens as far as those people who are just rude to you. So you don't take it into the next call. Those are awesome shares. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it, brother. Solid. Awesome. Good. Look, we got 10 minutes. 10 minutes. What else do you guys have? What were some best practices or ways you leverage others as you built your way up with, when you couldn't just write a check to get them? Okay. So what, are, what were some best practices or ways you leverage others as you built your way up when you couldn't just write a check to get what you wanted or needed? So all the resources are out there, man. Like, there's so much free content out there. First, you got to know what you're looking for. Um, but I, I, I leveled up my tribe. You know, I, I said, where do I have value and how can I add it to the people that I, you know, want to be a part of? So I, that's the first thing. Like, are you adding value? Value doesn't need to be money. Value does not need to be money. Where else can you add value to these resources that you're trying to, uh, you know, create a relationship with? So that's, that's number one. Number two is I just got obsessed. And my list says that whatever is your obsession is your possession. I just got obsessed with, with how I could be better. Um, and, and if I didn't have an answer for it, I just asked. Look, man, like if you don't ASK, you won't GET. <laughs> like, just ask. You know, maybe it's not all of the nuts and bolts you're looking for, but there'll be a nugget in there that could change your life. And the biggest thing, Gary, is when they give you the advice, do take action. <laughs> the one thing is if you get advice from somebody that, 
is where you want to be or whatever the case might be, and they see that you don't take action, highly, highly unlikely they're going to want to build a relationship with you. I mean, it's, it's just the truth. Don't ask for advice and you know, not take massive, aggressive, empowering action on it. All right, so you suggest going to the oldest registrations and following up even if no one has followed up. Yeah, of course. What's a good opening line? The same way. Look, Sylvia, I use, this, use the same line. If they answer the phone, it's the same line, whether they've been in there for a year and no one's talked to them or they've been in there for a day and no one's talked to them. So, I mean, I would just continue calling. Continue calling them. and Just, you know, call them, text them, email them, land, air, see. Until they tell you to, to go screw off, it's, it's fair game. Go get yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you guys pay for leads. You guys pay for it. And if, if they're buying... Do you know anybody else that's looking to make a move in the next three to six months? Let's see. And you also, um, you say to follow up with the same person multiple times, how do you keep them from sounding redundant? So for the follow-ups, it's different, right? Because it's not going to be the same opening line. For the follow-ups, it's using their why to hold them accountable. It's just being real with them, you know, and, and, and just saying, look, like we've been looking at homes for a year, you know, and we yet to meet. So I think this process go a lot smoother and maybe we could figure out some homes that really don't align with your lifestyle. If we can go ahead and just meet in person. And, and the follow-up just comes back to, you know, how persistent are you with your, your why questions? Cause that's really where you need to bring it into effect. And also I'll tell you this, when you, when you get the why questions, there's not as much follow-up. There's just not just because it's, it comes, it, 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 you basically get the appointments a lot more. <laughs> so there's not much follow-up, but there still obviously will be. And also it gives you a great talking point, you know, because remember guys, to become a, a conversion master, you first got to become a conversation master. You have to become a conversation master in order to become a conversion master. Right. So I wouldn't look at sales and say, Hey, how can I, you know, build a sale into this conversation or how can I build a sale? I would just look at how can I build a conversation that creates a sale, right? Don't create sales, create conversations. And then from there, it will create a sale if you ask the right questions. Action and movement. It is the way we have always been. Thanks for your shares. Absolutely. My pleasure. They say they haven't been looking. How do you get to get their why if they haven't been looking? Yeah, this goes back to your opening line. I don't know what it sounds like, Sylvia. So I think that's the first thing I'd work on is work on that opening line I talked to you about. Um, and if they say, oh, I've been looking, you just go back to, okay, well, is this your email address here? Um, and do you want me to take it off um, so you don't get any more property alerts? Like, don't, don't be scared to lose a deal either. You know, don't be scared to, to lose a deal. We got five minutes here, guys, five minutes. What questions do you have? And let's wrap this thing up. I'll answer one or two more questions. Anything, anything. Do, 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 do. So far, nothing. If you guys are liking this call, go on the Facebook group and let them know that the call is going well. Let other people know about this. Not everybody knows about this call. As crazy as it is, I would say not enough people, that's for sure, and I would say a lower percentage. Um, so if you guys make awareness on our Facebook groups, um, you know, tag me in it, whatever it might be. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, but you know, let people know that these calls are helping you guys out. What, uh, trainings do you recommend uh, for sync that for a newbie? I would look at the conversion hundred percent. You should be going to conversion day. Everybody on here should be going to conversion day multiple times. Um, and, you know, we play a board game. We go super deep into opening lines, into objections, into closings. We call out of your pipeline. Um, it's, it's the best, uh, in my opinion, the best conversion course in the industry, hands down. And I would do that for sure. So conversion day. And then I, I do the sync you training. You know, I don't know how, how much you know about the system. So uh, the more comfortable you feel in the system, the better. The more understanding of how, you, how to make money out of the system, the better. You know, the last thing you want is to have this expensive system and then going in there um, and not knowing what to do or how to do it. It's like going to a gym, right? So you go to a gym, you've never been there before, and you have all these weights, all these machines, and you walk in, what happens? You get overwhelmed, 
you maybe dabble there for a little bit, but then you leave and you never come back. The sync system could be the same way if you're not understanding what you need to do. That's the same with conversion too. So I, I would say for sure conversion day. Um, and then, uh, you know, definitely a sync you. And once again, I still don't know how much you know about the system, so I can't say for sure. But as a newbie, I'm not sure if there's anybody there training you on site. Um, I, I would definitely get over to a training. Let's see. Since it's been so long, they have been searching or maybe don't remember searching. So how do you hook them in? Uh, you know, so I'll get you. For the older people, what you're, what you're saying, um, Sylvia, you, you know, that have been on a site for a while, but maybe they haven't logged in in a while. Um, you know, you just say, hey, look, at one point you're looking at, you know, some properties on my website, uh, on the home search site. Sorry. Um, so just curious, you know, you look at making move next three to six months or, or, or are you just browsing? No, you know, I was just browsing. Okay. So, you know, what was prompting you to browse? Tell me about your situation. Write that down. Tell me about your situation. That's a huge nugget. Tell me about your situation. Tell me more. What else? Those are huge, huge words you should be using in your script. We were tech savvy. Uh, the Sync U training absolutely was a game changer in conversion day. Never question anything. Call in when you don't know. Perfect. So like Gary just said, Sync U training was a game changer as well as conversion day. And if you ever have a question, um, don't wait. Call in and, and somebody will help you. You guys have success partners that are rock stars that will be able to help you. And if they don't know, they'll know somebody that knows. What's the language you said we should be using in a script? So a few things. One, tell, tell me about your situation. That's a big one. Another one is when they tell you something, interesting. What else? That's the number one question coaches ask is what else? You get the people to open up and talk. And I'm always doing tie downs. That, you know, makes sense. Isn't that fair? Does that sound fair? Wouldn't you agree? Those are words I'm always using throughout the script. Those are uh, Sullivan nod is what they're called when you're doing it uh, face to face. All right. Any other questions? Got two minutes, two minutes. Hopefully you guys got some value out of today's call. Um, and, and you guys could take the lessons and put them into your business, into your life. Um, and, and truly, truly make 2019 the best year yet. Um, and, and just blow every other year out of the water. Um, and just remember, you know, in, increase your role play, you'll increase your pay. Um, go on to Facebook. And, and if you need a role play partner, there's plenty on there. Uh, tell everybody about the role play calls, obviously, that we're doing here. Sometimes we're able to, um, have, you know, go ahead and do role play, but we did things a little different today. What's the uh, name of the Facebook group? It's a secret group. So you have to ask your success partner or request, uh, request Jane Sink. But the best thing, honestly, is hit up your success partner and ask them uh, to go ahead or just email into Sync and say, can you please add me to the Facebook group? All right, guys, that is it. I am done for the day. Once again, I hope that you guys got some value. I hope you guys took uh, some notes and you take those notes and you put some kind of action plan behind it. Uh, but other than that, keep crushing it. Uh, and the next call is going to be in two weeks. I may or not may not be doing it, uh, but if not, you'll have another rock star here crushing it for you. But make sure you guys reach out if you have any questions. Once again, my name is John Marone, um, and hopefully, hopefully, you guys could take a little bit of value today and give it to somebody else as well, right? Let's go ahead and share this information out and not be selfish and uh, help others. Uh, you know, really uh, create that that 2019 goals and create 2019 to be the best one yet. But make sure you guys have a phenomenal rest of your day. Go crush it, and I'll see you guys on the next call. And don't forget, though, syncommunity.com if you guys want to come to one of the live events. See you guys then.